Hi, good afternoon, everyone who has dialed in very promptly at 1230. Um, we're just giving a few more minutes for people to stream in, understand that this is uh, lunchtime. So maybe people are just grabbing a few bites so that they can uh, nosh on their food while they listen in to the exciting sharing. Uh, I will be starting promptly at 1235. Uh, thank you. Kimberly, maybe you can... Uh, go to the QR code in case some people may want to use this time to fill in the pre-session survey if they haven't already done it. Thank you. I'll, I'll be back in a little bit. This is Karina's playlist. <laughs> Try to play a little bit more upbeat music for everyone while you're finishing up your lunch. Wow, it's amazing. This is our best well-attended uh, webinar to date. I see almost 321 of you already in. So I may start in another minute at 12.34 according to my computer uh, time since we do, you know, have quite a number of you already in. All right, I think I can get started. I want to be mindful, keep everyone to time, right? All right, uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much for all of you dialing in. Uh, as I mentioned, when I saw the numbers, we have about 320 of you dialed in at the moment. Um, and uh, so today is the third installment of our um, webinar. Uh, and so before I kind of go in and dive into the topic at hand, uh, which is on leadership mindsets uh, to support uh, World Life Harmony initiatives, let me uh, bear with me while I go through the Google uh, webinar housekeeping rules. So you can see that we will be recording the webinar. I know that's always a question that's asked. So the Tafet presentation sharing will be recorded as well as a panel dialogue. So all of you can uh, kind of uh, remember and recollect uh, some of the great sharing that we'll be hearing later this afternoon. Um, as, uh, as usual with confidentiality, please refrain from uh, taking any screenshots unless the presenter tells you, feel free to take the screenshot. Um, uh, as you know, some of these are, are confidential and we will send out what we have uh, gotten blessed uh, to, to the uh, web participants as a follow-up. For Q&A, uh, for some of you um, who may not be aware, uh, we have a Q&A console and also mobilize the uh, chat functionality. So you can say a very good afternoon and shout out uh, to friends out there. But in terms of the Q&A, we will only uh, direct the moderator and the panelists to look at the Q&A um, console. So if you do have a specific question to one of your panelists, uh, please uh, indicate your name and then your question so that they can take note uh, and respond accordingly. Um, and for those of you who are dialing for the first time, uh, allow me to just very quickly uh, give you some background context on the AFA for Work Life Harmony. You can go on to the next slide there. So the tripartite partners made up of MOM, NTUC and SNEF uh, came together, you know, and, and launched uh, this uh, um, 
Alliance for Action for World Life Harmony on 9 February. So time really flies. You're already several months into this program. And really the purpose of this AFA is to take joint action on the community, uh, with the community, sorry, on World Life Harmony issues. And the members are not just, you know, the tripartite partners or Tafet or IHRP. We also do include World Life ambassadors who are actually out in the community just like uh, yourselves. Uh, and so really this is a collective effort for us to uh, spotlight the importance of uh, work life harmony, as well as take initiative and commit to initiatives uh, to, to actually uh, put that into action. And the key goals, uh, one, to improve awareness of the importance of work life harmony and share best practice, work life practices, which is why we've got a very rich uh, align, uh, lineup of panelists to do the sharing, um, supporting workplace and wider community to sustain and embrace and adopt this world life harmony practices and then lastly supporting companies with uh in specific sectors which is why our webinars have been sectoral focus to overcome any challenges because we do realize that sometimes you know while you want to adopt the world life harmony practice sometimes it, there, there could be challenges or constraints that you work with um so you know we definitely want to support that so the topic sharing will be um uh, done by Ms. Judith Alagurisami. Uh, she's a manager of the FEP program and capability development at TAFAP, and she will be speaking on how can we strengthen work-life harmony in the workplace. Over to you, Judith. Thank you, Karina. Hi, everyone. Welcome and uh, good afternoon, and thank you so much for taking this lunchtime uh, to spend with us in today's COP. We're so glad to see over 400 of you here with us uh, from the manufacturing sector especially. So I'm Judith, as Karina mentioned, and I'm part of the team at TAFAP, where one of the things that we do is look at ways to support employers in implementing fair and progressive work practices. So today we want to begin with a sharing on what life harmony practices, you know, and look at what are some of the key trends that we have observed in society and the workplace. How can business leaders such as yourselves uh, approach work life harmony initiatives and implement them more sustainably? So moving on to the next slide. In 2014, we conducted a research study at TAFEP to understand attitudes towards work life harmony and flexible work arrangements in particular. We repeated the study in 2018 just to understand were there any shifts in attitudes and behaviours. And this is what we found. So what changed? We found that firstly, we were having smaller families in Singapore, right? And you would have seen, you know, calls to increase our fertility rates and have more kids. Secondly, we're seeing an increasing ageing population and also an ageing workforce. So we have more wood mature workers in our workforces, right? And also an ageing population. And Coupled with this, we're also seeing an increased proportion of caregivers in our workplaces as well. So you will have more employees who have caregiving duties and fewer individuals uh, with which to share these duties with. So in previous generations where perhaps, you know, parents would have had five, six or even eight children who would share the, the care of their elderly parents, now you have families which have two, one or even no children at all, right? So the burden on caregivers is increasing. And against all of this, we also have the increased efforts by the tripartite partners, our government, and also TAFEP to drive awareness of work-life harmony and increase the adoption of work-life programs. Now, looking more closely at some key shifts that we have seen in the next slide. These are four key shifts that we have seen in work-life trends. So in response to how society has evolved and changed, these are some changes in the workplaces that we have seen as well. Firstly, overall, employers are more open now to the idea of flexible work arrangements in particular. Employers and employees are aligned on the importance of work-life initiatives. Secondly, we see an increase in an understanding of the role of middle managers in implementing FWAs. That role has become more prominent as we see that managers and supervisors play an important role in making flexible work happen for your staff. Now, thirdly, we're seeing a more inclusive approach happening in the workplaces where in previous times we would have maybe seen that, you know, flexible work arrangements and work-life harmony is really something that's maybe for parents or for mothers. We're seeing that employers now see that, no, actually work-life harmony is for everyone and they're taking a more inclusive approach to it. And finally, employers are viewing FWAs as a more sustainable long-term option as well. Now, in recent years, in even more recent times, with COVID-19 happening, we have seen the acceleration 
of flexible work arrangement adoption, just as Dr. Biggie shared earlier. We're seeing this across workplaces in Singapore and with a greater digitalization of processes and services and greater exposure of, to FWAs as part of BCP planning, more employers and employees are adopting flexible work arrangements as well. Perhaps it's important then as employers here today to first look at what is work-life harmony? Let's consider that. Now, traditionally, we have always talked about this idea of work-life balance. Right, and this suggests that we spend an equal amount of work, of time and effort at work as well as in our personal lives. Now, as employers, you would know that this is really not accurate uh, as working individuals yourselves as well. We know that this is not possible. Depending on our priorities and life stage, we will apportion our time and effort differently at different phases. So what we are seeking really is not balance, but rather a way to integrate all the different aspects of our lives, our work, relationships, personal interests, health and well-being as well. So the end state that we want to reach is really work-life harmony. And work-life harmony is this state where individuals are able to manage their work responsibilities as well as their family and personal aspirations. In the next slide, we're just going to take a quick look. This is just a snapshot of work-life initiatives now, this may look like a rather overwhelmingly long list, but really what we want to show you is that work-life initiatives can be categorized into three main buckets. You have your flexible work arrangements, which are working arrangements that differ in some way to the traditional nine to six of being in the office setup that we are used to. Secondly, we have enhanced leave benefits, which is anything above and beyond your required uh, leave that you, are, you have to give your staff. Thirdly, we have employee support schemes, and these are all the other types of initiatives and programs that you as an employer can embark on to support your staff's overall work-life harmony and well-being. This can include things like childcare subsidies, lactation rooms for your returning to work moms, um, subsidized gym memberships for your staff, and even staff gatherings, things like family day, food days, and so on. Now, if you want to find out more about these different initiatives, we encourage you to visit our website at www.tafep.sg, uh, where we've given a little write-up on each of these. But more importantly, right now, uh, we just want you to think about you know, your own unique organization and your own workforce profile, because every company represented here is really quite different, and you will have different work-life needs according to the life stages and needs of your own staff. So what we suggest to you is to look at these different work-life initiatives that are available, flexible work arrangements, enhanced leave benefits, employee support schemes, and think about how you can tailor these work-life initiatives for your own workforce. Now, moving on to the next slide, we want to share with you as well that really what every company hopes to see is achieving results through people, right? Your people, as we know, are your biggest and best asset. And where we have seen work-life strategy implemented well, we have seen that it has been implemented by integrating it into the overall HR plans. You may be very familiar with things like talent acquisition, acquisition comp, and, comp and ban, performance management, and learning and development. And this is typically where our HR efforts tend to go to. Now, for progressive employers, we have seen that work-life harmony strategy is integrated into that overall HR plan as a long-term plan that they are doing. And where we have seen work-life harmony strategies really take off and do well, really this has come from a leadership direction and commitment that is driven right from the top. So where there is senior leadership buy-in, where the management, where the senior leaders believe in work-life harmony and they drive the organizational culture and values, we have seen that being driven from the top down through the entire organization. And that is really what makes your work-life harmony strategy um, sustainable and effective in the long run. And where that happens, we see improved employee engagement and productivity, as well as overall enhanced organizational performance. On the next slide, you'll see that where there is strong leadership buy-in and the work-life strategy is implemented in a sustainable way, it creates a win-win for the organization as well as the employee. And these are just some of the benefits that you can reap as well. Moving on, we also wanted to take this opportunity to share with you our latest tripartite standard that was just launched earlier this year. 
This is the tripartite standard on work-life harmony, which specifies practices that employers should implement at the workplace to support employees to better effectively manage their work goals as well as their personal goals, right? And uh, if you go on our website, you can see all the details on the tripartite standard on work-life harmony. And moving on to the next slide. Thanks, Kimberly. Now, adopting the tripartite standard on work-life harmony really gives you these benefits. Uh, some of you here may have already adopted our other tripartite standards as well, so you will be familiar with this process. You'll be recognized as an employer of choice. You'll be recognized uh, for your progressive employment practices as well, which will help you, of course, in retaining your staff as well as attracting new quality talent. And you also have access to the tripartite standards mark. So as soon as you have adopted the tripartite standard, we will share with you the exclusive logo that you can use on your website, your publicity, your recruitment materials as well. And just for now, uh, as an added bonus, right, for the new adopters of the tripartite standard on work-life harmony, uh, adopt early and you get this free human capital diagnostic tool as well. Now, the usual cost is $1,600 and this is really on a first come first serve basis. So this assists your organization to, ass to assess the maturity of your HR processes to support your business needs as well. So we encourage you uh, come and learn more about the tripartite standards on work-life harmony. And you'll see more about that on the next slide on how to contact us for more information. Right, so you can just uh, scan this QR code if you've got your mobile phones with you. Or you can go on our website, again, www.tafeb.sg and find out more about the tripartite standard on work-life harmony. Thank you for listening. Karina, I'll pass the time over to you. Wow, Judith, your time management is you know, really accurate on the dot. Thank you so much. And thanks for the sharing. I really love the highlight that you gave, um, which is, you know, striving beyond work-life balance. It's not just a mere 50-50 that we try uh, to, to balance out, you know, between work and, and life, but really looking at, you know, a more holistic concept, which is the idea of integrating work and personal goals and aspirations. And I love it because, I mean, we're all at different life stages, right? Maybe 10 years ago, I would have very different expectations of how I, do I want to integrate my uh, work and personal life. And now, you know, 10 years later, it's a different story with, with you know, my son and everything. So definitely, uh, I think that's a very uh, important emphasis uh, that, that we look at, you know, for this um, AFA for Work-Life Harmony. And, uh, and, you know, as a, a plug, you know, as, as Judith made, right, uh, there is uh, for the first early adopters of these standards, uh, sign up fast so that you can take advantage of the uh, human capital diagnostic tool as well. Thank you, Judith. All right, uh, now we're just going to run a very quick uh, live poll of the audience. Um, so I think I can get the help from my team. Three polling questions, uh, you know, just put on a rating scale of one to seven. First poll question is how important do you think leadership mindsets are in supporting work-life harmony initiatives? So, you know, we'll give everyone maybe 30 seconds uh, to just, you know, put it down. No right or wrong answer. It's really uh, your, your scale and your, um, your perceptions. Okay, maybe uh, 10 seconds, uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's the results? Drum roll. Let's see. Wow, very important. Look at that. 66% of people feel that really the leaders, um, you know, taking that tone from the top, uh, walking the talk and so on, really important to help us support what life harm initiatives. Thank you, audience. We'll be sure to capture this data point. Second poll, please. Talking about workplace culture. Because the leaders can kind uh, you know, do what they can uh, to role model and inspire others. But I think we also need to make sure that the um, all the employees, middle managers, and so on, are working hard together cohesively to promote a good workplace culture that actually does support work-life harmony initiatives. So again, if you can just uh, indicate the level of importance of workplace culture. 
I'll just count down from five now. I know I'm not exactly doing it by second. Uh, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Closing the poll. Ah, again, 61% feel the culture is, is very important, uh, followed by six. I think both polls, we saw most of the um, responses are in five and above. So everybody, I guess, you know, signing up for this webinar, all tuned in and uh, aligned that it's very important that we have the leadership mindset as well as the culture in place to help us support with life harmony. Last poll before we go into the panel. What extent... Is a pull up. Okay, what extent, again, scale of one to seven, what extent do you think there is scope to implement or enhance work life harmony initiatives in your company? Give everyone a few minutes to think it through. And this poll question is somewhat related to the last polling question later about, you know, what can you as an individual do? Um, relates it to, you know, promoting and adopting World Life Harm Initiatives, but let's take a look. Can we close the poll out? Okay, so there are some of you here, um, you know, in, in the top three to four um, ratings, where I think, you know, you are, you're, Definitely sign up for this uh, to listen in on what are some of the good practices you can can uh, put in place within your company. But by and large, it seems like, uh, you know, at least 35% of you, um, sorry, the, the reverse, 35% of you think that there's scope to implement. So actually, we, we do have uh, quite a number of you who think that there's more that we can do. So definitely, I think um, that that's why we have a very large uh, panel set up later. Uh, to do a lot more sharing. Um, and, you know, while the panelists are from the manufacturing industry, I think uh, some of what they share can be applicable to the other sectors as well. All right, thank you um, for sharing the poll results. If we can move on uh, to the panel, that's what everyone's kind of tuned in to listen to. Uh, a little bit further back, thank you. Yeah, so before I kick off the, the panel proper, I'm actually going to have Director Yeo, uh, who is, you know, kindly agreed to help us moderate the panel as well, double hatting. Let me quickly um, share her bio so you get to know Director Yeo a little bit better, and then I'll pass it over to her to help me moderate the panel. So Director Yeo Wan Ling is a member of the parliament for the Pasi Ries Pungo Group uh, Representative Constituency and the Vice Chairman of the Northeast Community Development Council. She was appointed as a Labour Movement Representative uh, in the Tripartite Work Group on Lower Wage Workers in 2020 and serves as a Chairperson for both the Tripartite Cluster on Retail Trade and Tripartite Cluster of Food Services. She's also the alternate member of the National Wages Council representing NTC. Now, she joined NTUC in August 2020 and is currently double hatting. Um, she is the director of USME as well as the Work and Family Unit. Uh, as the director of USME, um, Director Yo works with the small and medium enterprises and Trapapat partners to boost productivity through innovation and enhance SME's employment practices so as to improve the wages, welfare, and work prospects of their employees. And she's very passionate about diversity issues as well. Um, so in her role as director of the NTUC Women and Family Unit, she leads the team to further strengthen NTUC's reach to women, helping them protect their livelihood and support their careers so that they can reach their full potential. Over, over to you, Director Yu, so that you can uh, kick us off uh, with the panel. Oh, thank you so much, Karina. That was an amazing introduction. Thank you, thank you. You're always very kind of your introductions. Um, hello, everybody. It's very, very nice, you know, to be with all of you. In fact, I think uh, this is the second um, uh, uh, a panel seminar that we've been doing with the IHRP, and I'm always, always very excited to meet up with the members of the IHRP. Well, today we have a very, very power-packed uh, panel. As you can see, we have... Um, six panelists who are with me um, and all of them are actually all gearing to go to talk more about work-life harmony. Um, what I'm going to do is actually to have all six of our members here, you know, to give a very quick introduction 
of their company as well as a little bit about their views of what work-life harmony means to them. So I think, right, um, we're going to do um, uh, according to how the pictures are lined up. So, you know, it's going to be CS first. <laughs> CS, always good to see you. Hi, thanks, uh, Director Yo. My name is CS Chua. I'm the oh. uh, Regional President and Managing Director for Infinian for Asia Pacific uh, Operation. Uh, so we are in the we are leading semiconductor company addressing uh, markets like mobility, energy efficiency, um, IoT and big data as well as security. Um, my view on uh, work life uh, harmony, I guess, uh, very important because uh, work is actually a major part of your life, and if you do not have a harmony it will actually distort even your personal uh, life as well. So it's indeed very important uh, for us. So pass it back to you, uh, Director Yo. Okay, thank you so much, Yes, You know, um, actually guys and girls, you can just call me one Ling, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the next person I'm going to call upon is my brother, Dr. Vicky. <laughs> Hi, one man. Thank you. Yes, again. Dr. Bicky, you know, I, I think we, we could be almost colleagues because I see you almost like on a weekly basis and we're on so many panels together. <laughs> There's so much passion. There's so much passion. And, and thank you for, the, for your kind words. Um, Rolls Royce based in Singapore for many, many decades. Our activities are uh, as an industrial technology company. Uh, we serve the aerospace, defense, and power systems part of the group. And particularly in aerospace, we've gone through a pretty um, challenging time with the pandemic. And it's really, um, when you look at what is the strength of a company, it is our people. You can have the world's best product, you can have the world's best intellectual property, but it is your people that will see you through any challenges that one faces. Uh, and the work-life balance, the integration, the 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 harmony is, is hugely important because it allows us to unlock an individual's full potential. And we need to really understand our workforce to what, what is it that we need to do to give the right foundations to the individuals to be able to achieve that. Because if you unlock an individual's full potential, it, it filters into the teams, into the businesses, into the group level. So I'm really keen um, to have this conversation deeper with you, Director, uh, and, and great to be here today. Thank you so much, Dr. Bicky. Okay, next person up is Davis, one of my new friends. Hello, Davis. <laughs> good morning. Thanks, thanks. And uh, <laughs> uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, let me just give you an introduction of Kamin, all right? Uh, Kamin is really a, a global specialty ingredient company, all right? It's, it's just about 60 years old uh, company. We, we provide 500 ingredients to many sectors. Uh, let me just give you a rundown of uh, the kind of sectors that we support, all right, in animal nutrition and health, all right, in aquaculture, pet food, uh, human food, textile technology, animal vaccination, and what have you not, all right. So uh, the kind of product that we, we, we produce, just let me give you an example, could be things that you are familiar with, antioxidant, probiotic enzymes, all right, I, I'm, I'm sure you, all, you understand, but I think it's really geared towards the uh, animal, animal aspect of Ingredient, all right. Okay, now uh, my perspective of uh, work-life harmony, I think the the cheese has moved. Uh, yeah. Uh, Otherwise, someone will move your cheese, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. The cheese has moved. Uh, I, I was just talking to a colleague in uh, both US and Europe. Uh, in almost all their applications, job application, uh, flexi work is now a requirement. So, uh, and I think in Singapore, we understand that we, we kind of straddle between the East and the West, all right? And this will come, this tidal wave will come. So I think as an organization, we should gear for it. And from a HR perspective, I think we need to understand that what life happening is part of your bigger human resource strategy. Don't look at, look at it as it is. It is a total HR capital strategy. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Davis. And then I'm going to pass this on to the only sister in the panel. And I'm very happy she's also surnamed Yo. So it's the Yo Yo sisters. Hello, Celeste. <laughs> Hello, thank you, Wan Ling. I'm very happy to join the panel this round. So my name is Celeste Yo. Um, I'm the senior VP um, responsible for the plant in Singapore. I won't introduce Infineon, I think uh, CS Chua has done. So um, the plant in Singapore. Um, is at the 168 Galang Way. That's 
the plant has been there uh, since 50 years. So we are really uh, mature and at the same time continue to uh, create value as a final test, uh, advanced final test facility for Infineon Technologies. So myself, um, definitely uh, I believe that uh, a happy person will definitely be able to uh, create and excel in their job. So this is very important. Uh, the basis of happiness is our work and life are in harmony. The harmony, I, uh, I really particularly like. We're not talking about balancing anymore because a big part of our life is really, I mean, work is a big part of our life and we really have to be able to uh, allow our people to have uh, the time that allocated to their needs to, in, to achieve harmony so they are not uh, just uh, stressful about you know, having to manage uh, both sides. So life harmony is really the basis also to have a happy empl uh, employee or a happy team. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Celeste. You know what? I actually have the same views as you on, you know, how we're naming our AFA, which is actually work-life harmony and not just work-life balance. Mm -hmm. um, I think we'll talk a little bit more about that from the female perspective later on, but definitely it's true. It, it is about harmonization and not just about balance between, you know, um, right. two. Yes, exactly. Because it's not a zero-sum game, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm going to bring this on to Daniel Nia. Hello, Daniel. Hi. Yes, Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Friend of mine too. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. And very Hi. exciting as well because I think you do represent, right, um, the face of you know a, a new a, a new company, isn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm Daniel Nia, deputy CEO of uh, Hook Technic. So I'm helping our CEO uh, Peter Ho manage the company. So maybe let's start off with some uh, intro on Hook first. So Hook Technic is founded in two zero zero six by four Singaporeans. So we have turned uh, fifteen years old recently. Uh, throughout these years, we have been helping companies uh, solve their pain points by creating bespoke solutions and providing professional services via automation, professional uh, service robotics, robotics middleware layer, and also special vehicles in the commercial and government sector. Uh, we focus more on low volume, high mix kind of manufacturing. Right? So work harmony, work life harmony to us is about integrating work and life together and to be most efficient in both. So it's very important uh, to grow as an individual who in turn actually contribute to the company. So it takes everybody and also a very positive culture to work for work-wide company. Thanks. Thank you so much, Daniel. You know, I'm, I'm very excited that actually our panel today is represented by a very, very good mix of companies. You know, we have both companies who are, you know, international MNC, you know, and foreign companies. And also at the same time, we have companies, right, who are locally bred. So besides, you know, Hope, uh, we also have Wipiap. Hello, Wipiap. Good to Hello. see you again. Wipiap, you're going to round, you're going to round this uh, panel <laughs> off uh, in terms of the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm Chan Wipiap here. I'm uh, with a company that I founded uh, about 22 years ago mm -hmm. called M Plus Communication. We uh, specialize in uh, Designing and uh, manufacturing satellite uh, communication terminal. You know, if you, I am quite sure you have seen those big, big uh, satellite diesels. Okay, those are signal concentrator that will concentrate the satellite signal, and you then go into our equipment. We will then convert them into something that you can use either in the digital form or in the in the analog form. Okay, we actually sell most of our product around the world, we export to about 55 countries. In fact, Singapore is a very small market just because we are very small, so we don't really need a lot of satellite uh, uh, communication equipment. In Singapore, actually, though, the main customer is actually Singtel, who buy our, our product, yeah. Okay, uh, we, are, we actually, is a company that uh, have fairly low uh, staff turnover, so we actually have people that have been with us for for many years, many of them actually started since we, uh, since we started the company. So actually work-life balance is a very necessary part uh, of our operation. In fact, we have been adopting a very flexible HR policy. And actually we started all this, uh, actually even before government started to push all this. It's also our necessity because the staff will come to us and say they, they need to uh, go and fetch the kid after school and whatsoever. So we, we let them go off 
early, for example. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you yeah. so much. Vipyak. That Thank was you. a very, very good localized and um, mm -hmm. example of you know how work-life harmony um, is being introduced in companies. Well, maybe at this point, you know, since we're all done with our introductions, maybe what I'd like to do is to, you know, let everybody know here, you know, the 478 of us know here, how this panel can be conducted. There's going to be two parts to the panel. So the first one, we'll be asking a series of questions to our panelists. Um, and, but what I want to do is also to hear from our, our HR practitioners. Our HR practitioners, right, um, I've, I've been on, you know, uh, previous panels with you. I know that you're very, very engaged. I also know that you have a lot of questions that you want to ask. So, you know, if you can, would you please put down your questions in the Q&A? You can see that in the button at the bottom. And also at the same time, you can put this on the chat as well. So, you know, um, what I'll do is that we will finish up with the questions that we have prepared for our panelists. And after that, right, what we'll do is actually to read through the questions that you've put up in the Q&A and we'll reserve maybe about 15 to 20 minutes um, at the end of this uh, panel, you know, to address some of the issues or the questions that you may have, all right? Okay, so, you know, just, just let it rip, you know, just put all your questions up there. Now, I'm going to ask um, uh, a, 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 a very, um, I'm going to expound on something that was asked just now during, you know, our uh, survey. And it's actually really about how, you know, um, all of us here on the panel, you know, are actually leaders, you know, in our own organizations. And I saw how important it was amongst all our HR practitioners that you know, it was a seven out of, you know, seven out of seven, um, how important it was for leadership to actually take a, um, uh, to take the, 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 the leadership role in pushing out work-life harmony within your own organizations. So maybe what I would like to do is to ask you know, all our leaders here, you know, as leaders in your respective you know, organizations, what are some of the key challenges that you will face you know, in implementing work-life harmony initiatives? You know, and this being you know, several things. Of course, you know, we talked about flexible work arrangements. We talked about you know, enhanced leave benefits for our staffers. And of course, at the same time, right, some of the employees employee support schemes, um, you know, such as, you know, healthy living, healthy eating and all that. So perhaps what we can do is, you know, is to, to go quickly around amongst all our leaders here, you know, to just, you know, chat a little bit about how you foresee, you know, you rolling this out, the work-life harmony initiative out within your own organizations and how as leaders, right, you would actually be, you know, walking the talk on this. So perhaps what we can do, right, is um, maybe we can start with Davis. Uh, Davis, I am also uh, very cognizant of the fact that you're also a HR professional. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, mm. Marvin. And I think I'm the only HR in this whole panel. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let, me, let me start by, by uh, addressing two parts of this uh, question. Right? First, part, first thing first is I think uh, work-life harmony uh, is a composite of, uh, I, I think in the earlier presentation, it shows that work life harmony is a combination of uh, you know flexible work arrangement all right uh, leave that you know fam family friendly leaves yes as well as uh, employee support scheme yes. so I, I think if you think about work life harmony from that perspective then I think you are thinking it more in a much broader sense so I think I want to guide the whole uh, mindset with regards to that uh, Yes, uh, I think I, I like to address the, the elephant in the room, and that is, I think, uh, work life flexible work life arrangement is indeed very challenging to implement in in some sectors. Mm. Right? Uh, we all know that uh, it may be less so in some sector, but more challenging in, in in it. And I think manufacturing is one of those sectors, and it also depending on company to company with regards to culture. Uh, with, us, with regards to the proportion of manufacturing size uh, staff versus the non-manufacturing staff size. So I think there is all this different com complexity with regards to uh, implementation. So no doubt about it. I think it is important. Uh, my, my way of doing, you know, implementing such, such uh, work-life harmony initiative is really to engage all stakeholders. All right. Uh, just now, I think you have mentioned, uh, you know, that one of the one of the challenges really is that each stakeholder may have different uh, concern, different needs, and I think it's very important 
uh, as human resource professional to engage in all these different stakeholders. Uh, and, and the way Kevin goes about doing that is really to have frank and open communication. I see. So, so Davis, so what you're saying, right, as, you know, a HR lead, right, uh, within Kamin, what you do is that you actually chat with um, uh, your employees, both on a one-on-one -on -one level, as well as on, you know, maybe like a town hall level, you know, on, on what you intend to do, right, with work-life harmony. Is, is that what you're saying? Correct, correct. And okay. we have, we have, we have, uh, you, you see, we don't do this just for that. We, we you, in Kamin, we do have regular dialogues. We call it diagonal slice uh, that what? we do it every quarter. Di and it's diagonal, diagonal slice. slice. Okay. Yeah. And it's not just Davis conducting it. The president of the company together with me conducts such dialogues with them. And it's through such open and frank communication that we hear from them as, as well as we share with them what are our thoughts over certain things. And See. we don't just do it with employees. Uh, we do it with the middle management because middle management holds we call it the linchpin of the organization. That's true. You know, you have the intention of the of the top, and then you have the rest of the organization. But the thing that holds everything together is your middle management. So it's very important to engage this group. Understand? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Davis. Um, CS. Perhaps we could hear from you. You are a fifty-year employer in Singapore, and so that means, right, at least right, three generations of Singaporeans have been employed by you. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I mean, just before I walk into the meet, meet, meeting, we just yeah. had the management discussion, and we were thinking of how to set a new policy for employee who will be approaching fifty years working for Infineon. <laughs> wow. so, oh my yeah, goodness, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, um, talk about the flexi work uh, arrangement. I think uh, in Finland, we introduced this uh, flexi work arrangement as well as work from home policy back in 2012. And it is a very long journey. And until today, I, 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 before the pandemic, I wouldn't say that it was uh, extremely successful. There are still some, uh, some topic we need to address before we, it can work. Now, when we talk about the uh, work-life harmony, I think one, one very important topic is with the uh, advancement of a smartphone, people can bring a lot of work home and you are fully contactable 24 hours by various uh, channel. And, and this will actually, uh, actually eat into the, the space of your personal life, even though you allow people to work from home, you allow people to uh, go home early or come, come to the office late. Now, it wouldn't help if you continue to load your organization with a lot of requests through all this uh, modern technology. What, what I feel is very important is the, the walk the talk from the, uh, the leadership team, not just the top guy, but the, the next level, the next level. Now, give you one example. Now, you know, in the past, uh, in, a, in an organization, you know that when the, the bosses are still around, working late, it's very unlikely that the, the, the subordinate would like to go home earlier. Or oh, dare right? to go home, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then plus the fact is when the leaders are, or the managers are in the office, yes. there's a chance that because you are able to talk to people, those people that are spending longer hours in the office together with the managers are perceived as someone having advantages, the airtime that they have with the, 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 the manager. Now, so... So the manager has to walk the talk by also doing, like for example, leave the office early and sometimes work from home so that you give the fair uh, access of airtime to the, all the employee. Now, if you don't do that, what, we'll do, what, what, what some employee will do is they will stay in the office so that they're able to catch you, able to talk to you, having a coffee with you. And that help to improve their probability of so-called the career progression. And then when the rest of them see that and say, oh, then I shouldn't go home early because the boss is around. So I will stay longer so that I have a chance to catch a coffee with him so that I can give him more, him or her more ideas about my, 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 my things that I'm doing. So I think it has to be from the top. That means you set a policy, you should also follow it. I think this will be the, the, the most important one. Most definitely. Yeah. You know, you know, CS, I, I, I might just want to relate a, a very strange story, um, a story of my friends. Um, essentially, you know, what, what, what you talked about, you know, about how, you know, in, in previous cultures, right, um, if the boss stays in the office, people don't leave. Um, I actually had a friend whose um, husband used to, uh, you know, really practice work-life balance. Okay, so he would come home, you know, at 6.30 
and after a while, my friend right started to get um, feedback from her neighbors. <laughs> And the feedback from her neighbors was that, is your husband not doing well at work? You know, because he's always back at 6.30. <laughs> and then so my friend actually felt pressured and she actually told her husband, you know, hey, maybe uh, you can put in a little bit more OT. <laughs> but, you know, it actually points to the second part of, you know, our, our questions, which is essentially about how important it is, right, in terms of the culture, the cultural part of it. You know, I, I hear from Davis, I hear from you how important it is to actually have the middle managers, you know, come in, right, to, you know, push this, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I, I actually do want to hear a little bit from, you know, the rest of the panelists, you know, on how they feel like pushing this down from, you know, a very top-down angle, which is like from, you know, the, the top management. How, how you think, right, this can actually affect, you know, the, you know, the, the culture, you know, do you think it's something that can be done uh, quickly? Is this something you know, that, you know, um, needs like, you know, maybe a year or two, you know, to, to happen? I, you know, I, I, I do think it's important, you know, that, that we look at, you know, um, how this is, you know, in terms of, of getting it through, right, the, the rank and file. And perhaps maybe what we can do, right, is to, to hear a little bit from Wipiak on this. Okay. Uh, actually, we find that uh, one of the hardest thing uh, to actually do this is actually the employee themselves because they will say, okay, <laughs> if I work, uh, <laughs> let's say I request to work only six hours a day instead of eight, will I be penalized? Yeah. Right. So, so you have to make sure that you, I mean, you have to also in practice and in also in, in verbal form to make sure that they understand that they will not penalize, they will be assessed fairly respect to the rest of the people yes yeah it's, but but you know that's that's absolutely true and yeah. and i find that right uh, because of covid 19 there mm. were a lot of resistance um, from a lot mm. of companies and you know because i look after the sme uh, portfolio within the ntuc as well mm. i actually found that you know um initially a lot of um, smes were quite reticent you know, about pushing, you know, flexible work arrangements because they think that it would affect productivity. And, you know, with COVID-19, it actually has happened. You know, it was, tail it was very good tailwinds, you know, for, for this aspect. Uh, but, you know, Vipak, you brought up something that is so true. It is about, you know, how do we norm this, you know, uh, given that with COVID-19, you know, a lot of people are now, you know, working from home. And, and how do you balance, um, uh uh, the kind of, you know, benefits, you know, the kind of, you know, performance appraisal, you know, for people you know, that as a boss, you see often, you know, in yeah. the, in the office versus someone who's actually remoting quite a bit. And I think Davis did talk about this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just as well. Maybe we can hear from Daniel. Daniel, what do you think, you know, um, when, when your company started, right, to, to work from home and all that, right, was, was this something that your company also had, you know, started to talk about how do you adjust some of your HR practices? you know, towards this? Okay, um, for work life for me, I think it's relatively easy to go out, but management needs to lead by example, oh. right? Uh, I think the bigger challenge is to actually sustain and refine the policies, right? So after trying out, um, we have certain set of challenges. We have short-term challenges, which we quickly solve it, like uh, what you mentioned, um, setting the right expectations, um, because if we are working from home, and uh, a, a large part of the time is working at home, uh, then we have to uh, readjust accordingly expectations as well. And also the platform and the tools that we have to use uh, to accommodate that. And more importantly, actually, we have reached the long-term challenges now, like uh, mental health and people are getting a bit paranoid, right? So I think there's a need to have frequent touch points uh, from different levels of management, very frequent indeed. Um, so for mental well-being um, as a start, right, um, it's very important. So they do feedback that the additional hours that's put in, right, because they, they save on the transportation time, it's kind of translated to working time. So the line between work and, and life, right, is a bit fuzzy to them already. So um, what management can do is actually to guide them a bit more on how to draw a line clearer, oh. right? And, and also we find that, like, people are very close to our families now and could sometimes prioritize that over work. Like for example, I think many a times we call me meeting during work hours, but because of uh, work-life harmony, employees 
could potentially also choose to settle some family, family matters first. So definitely there's a need to work around this and also stress the importance of uh, work-life priorities. Yes. And have uh, recurring meetings to have recurring meetings and not too much uh, at home meetings so that they can actually plan uh, better. So I think that, that will work better as well. Oh, actually that's, that's a very handy and interesting tip. So it is about, you know, having, you know, fixed, you know, uh, meetings. Let's say, you know, okay, in NTUC, right. we have something called Tuesday meetings, you know, which means, right, this meeting happens every single Tuesday, you know, and it's a management meeting. And, mm. and so all of us plan around that, you know, and so you're saying is to, to lessen, you know, that, that kind of ad hoc meetings that might come up. Right. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, right. that's, a, that's a very interesting, you know, tip. Um, maybe we could hear a little bit from Celeste as well. You know, um, Celeste, you know, coming also from that 50 years, you know, of Infineon, right, being an employer in Singapore. Um, but Celeste, you definitely don't look like, you know, you've worked 50 <laughs> years in Infineon. But what I was going to say that, you know, th does Infineon, have you seen, right, like a changing, um, you know, pattern, you know, in the way that females, you know, relate to work, you know, and especially, you know, leading up from, you know, what Daniel had mentioned just now about like how, you know, COVID-19 has also affected, you know, the way that, you know, people interface and, and, and look at work. Yeah, I think uh, Infineon, um, uh, like uh, CSA, we started uh, flexible work hours quite early. In fact, in the whole work-life harmony... When do you do this flexible work, work arrangements again? Uh, 2012. 2012, okay. Yeah. So the, uh, at least in Infineon, I must say we have a very holistic, uh, comprehensive um, work-life harmony uh, related uh, uh, welfare uh, consideration, whether it is in the health or in the work hours or in the leave scheme, especially the health part, I think uh, we also must not forget because in the end, um, if your health, um, if the company work environment also consider the employee's health, uh, in, uh, take the employee's health into consideration, then it will also make the life of the uh, family together uh, as uh, less uh, disturbance, right? So um, as in Singapore, especially we uh, in the factory per se, uh, we uh, consider a lot of uh, automation. Now, as you know, in Finland, Singapore also do a lot of uh, smart factory in initiation and also now a, uh, artificial intelligence. We can uh, take the chance to really um, look into man really uh, those uh, job that task that uh, create a lot of fatigue or uh, uh, very heavy very yeah repetitive and very heavy carrying uh, job and automate them or put some uh, artificial intelligence in to let the work uh, exposure of the um, uh, employee to be uh, uh, managed better, whether it's for, for example, inspection, you know, you use your eyes for 12 hours, how we can uh, put some intelligence in to reduce this. And explicit, especially for the female part, I would say uh, in Finian, um, uh, we have this diversity inclusion. Yeah, so this uh, is a very strong, uh, uh, I would say, culture, globally driven. So also, the whole uh, work-life harmony uh, uh, package we have, we, I would say um, there are all the dif different benefits that can cater for the older employees, the mm -hmm. female employees, yeah, the younger generation, um, the lower level and the higher level. So it is a very comprehensive, uh, so that everybody can find something that actually fits for the, themselves. So even for female, I would say part-time work possibility uh, is also considered for um, new parents. Yeah. So, yo. <laughs> yes, definitely, sister. You know what? You, you, said, you said it, you know, you, you touch on all the points where I think, right, um, a female employee, you know, would uh, be very thankful for, you know, for employers, you know, to introduce all these. I mean, coming from me, because I, I wear the hat of coming from the unions, you know, and representing female mm. workers with my women and family, you know, unit uh, responsibilities. I actually do see, right, that um, lately there has been quite a number of uh, females who actually want to return to work. I think whether or not yes. it's because, you know, of the... Uh, uh, the unfortunate circumstances which is happening to our economy now, a lot of people maybe are seeing, you know, reduced um, take-home, you know, uh, household income. 
And because of this, I think a lot of females want to come out to work. And, you know, some of the things that you have mentioned, you know, very progressive, like, you know, reduce work hours, you know, um, for uh, it, it could also be like shift work is broken mm. up two or three. I think all these also point, right, towards, you know, um, company support, uh, towards people who have caregiving needs. And I'm very, very happy to see that this was actually one of the uh, recommendations, right, uh, under the, you know, um, work-life harmony tripartite standards. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much, Celeste, you know, for that. Um, um, Dr. Bicky, I know you've been gearing to go. <laughs> so Rolls Royce, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's also a very long-term, long-time employer here in Singapore. In fact, when I was uh, working in EDB, I remember visiting, you know, with Rolls Royce getting, you know, ho hoping that you could, you know, bring in more lines, you know, more R&D into Singapore. Um, so Dr. Bicky, do you, do you find that over the, 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 the last 10 years or so, you know, that there has been a lot more pressure on the company looking at, you know, work life, you know, harmony or like work balance type of benefits in order for you to attract the type of talent that you might be needing as you expand in your business in Singapore. Thanks, Sister Yeo. Uh, and as you rightly point out, the, um, the, the skills and capabilities of, of what we look for are quite unique. Um, they're hard to um, find. And when you do find them, we take time in sort of growing and nurturing those capabilities and working with our partnerships and ecosystems. So retention is a big focus for us um, and, and really making sure that once employees are with us, that they want to continue to stay with us. You know, our average age of employees at the moment is 35. So you can see we're still a young workforce. Um, we have lots of individuals who come straight out of ITEs or, or polys. Um, and then we have um, a sort of... Uh, sort of more mature colleagues as well. So I think the first thing, um, and as CS uh, pointed out earlier on, for us, it really is about the adoption, adoption of the best practices. And uh, in a very similar manner, we've been doing flexible work arrangements for a very, very long time, but only a handful of individuals actually implemented it. Um, and, it's on, and one of the reasons is because we need the leadership to lead by example. Mm. And once the leadership starts doing it, you see the middle manager start doing it and it sort of filters down. But I think we need to be mindful that the conversation cannot just be sort of from top down. It, 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 it has to be the harmony because of the, the integration framework that was presented earlier on, comes with many different um, evolutions of where individual is in their in the journey of life. Yes. Um, so, so we need to take that, that into consideration. And one of the things that I thought was really, really powerful was we do have informal sort of um, uh, uh, committees that are set up and they're just led by volunteers. Uh, and they're volunteers, uh, we have one that is the share club. So it's about how share do we bring club? share club. So it's about, you know, we might arrange sort of um, uh, family day events together to promote sort of different businesses and families to come and see how parents work um, in the facilities. There was another sort of well-being club that is also sort of sits slightly differently. And there were some things that came out of that where we sort of uh, captured and they're from your employees that get sort of filtered up to the middle management and the middle management bring it to the, to the committee where we make the adjustments. So it, it, we need to allow that vehicle of communication so that we, we really address what matters for our people. And some of the things that we um, uh, implemented uh, quite some time ago, for example, maternity leave for us is six months. Um, six months? Wow. Yeah, so, so we, we did that because um, that's what our employees wanted. And, and, you know, we looked at, can we do this or is it difficult? And then we had the conversations and we sort of put, put, that, put that in place because we are a global company. And you look at some countries that are actually even more progressive in some areas because of the... Uh, the, um, the, the, the government policy that, that you might have in those countries. So what we do want to do is in, in terms of the frameworks that we have, what are the areas that we can advance? And that, that was just one sort of the example, right. but it comes you, about Dr. supporting. Actually, Dr. Bicky, I want to ask you something because you brought up something very interesting just now. You know, you talked about yourself being a global company, of course, right? And do you find that across, you know, all the different countries, you know, you, you would have, you know, different types of standards? You know, uh, is there some catching up to be done in Singapore? Or is Singapore like, you know, one of the leaders, you know, when it comes to work life, you know, harmony? 
It's, it's a fair question. And, and we normally have um, on one side is your national guidelines or national policy guidelines. And then the other one is the group countries, policy right? guidelines. Correct. Right. Um, and the group policies do not change from which country or geography one is in. We have that sort of baseline across all. And then you can only augment that further with sort of the national policies that might be there, that might be adjusted. But, so, so, but the group policies we make sure are, are sort of quite quite fair and progressive. Mm. And in many ways, the practices that we have um, implemented here, you know, we, we are such a diverse um, uh, uh, sort of country and mm. so is my population in, 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 my, in my company. You right. know, we speak with, with 21 different nationalities. Um, I went into a room the other day and there were only seven people in the room and betwe in between those seven individuals, they speak 12 different languages, you know, and, so, so, and many of you will have that in your organizations as well. So we must really embrace on where we are leading. And this is clearly one of the areas that we're leading is the diversity and inclusion and, and, and putting frameworks in place that allows which is really part of the whole work-life harmony as well. Yes. Um, and then we sort of communicate that back into the group as well. So adaptation, you know, the, the, the priorities and integration will evolve, they will change, and we must pick up those signals within the organization on what matters more, more um, and, and be able to sort of have the right, the policies and mechanisms to be able to support that. Because, you know, if you don't do it in time, it becomes too late and yeah, individuals uh, then do not perform at the best or, or even you worse, will lose they them actually them. you kind of correct. lose them to the industry to more progressive employers isn't it correct right correct. So, so so we 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 this is a very um everyday conversation for us mm, um uh, and e even at, a, at our ceo leadership level we we catch up on once a month and there's a there's an allocation of time that we always talk about people um, and, and people in terms of at the moment for us is very much about the work-life harmony. Wonderful, wonderful. Actually, CS, would you also weigh in, you know, in, um, on the question just now, you know, because Infineon definitely, right, is a global company as well. You know, do you find that Singapore is catching up or is, you know, Singapore, you know, kind of setting the trend, you know, on, on work-life harmony in the discussion of work-life harmony? Yeah, I think... Uh... No straight answer. I think some we are ahead, some we are behind. Uh, just example, to, example. Example, the, uh, the work from home when we introduced in 2012, we are ahead of the rest of the organization. Very good. Uh, <laughs> but you'll be surprised because, you know, in, uh, in Europe, right, uh, or especially in Germany, uh, you'll be surprised to hear that they don't have work from home. In fact, they do have, but it's not a policy. You see, they, because it's a way of life. It's a, it's a way of life and they didn't, <laughs> So what happened is they didn't spell it out. They didn't put on the policy. So it become a very uh, fluid and flexible way of doing things. So it's not that they don't have, but it's already a part of their practices. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so I, but to say, put it on the policy and say that we do it, I think we are ahead of them. And they, they are still struggling to say, should we put it now in writing or not? So, so this part, I, I, I am, let's say, very happy that from a policy perspective, we are, we are way ahead. But from a culture perspective, there's one point I want to say that, you know, what I mentioned about work-life harmony is about the fact that, you know, and any individuals still have a large part of their personal life space, yes. weekend, all this. Yes. Now, uh, if, if they are still working late in the night and, and the weekend, it doesn't help them. It doesn't, it, the, the, the way we say work-life harmony is not to bring work back to the, the, the house and continue doing. And this part, I think this is something that we need to uh, catch up a, a lot in Europe because I just to give you one uh, example that, you know, in, 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 in the German culture, when, when the, any employee, they are away for holiday, you cannot reach them. Hmm. You can't reach them. You can send them tons of email. You cannot reach them. They will not reply, good or bad. But I think to a certain extent, uh, it, that actually helped them to, uh, to rest. You know, everyone needs to rest and uh, to be prepared back uh, to, to ramp up again. So, so I think this part, uh, we are not doing well enough from a culture perspective. Uh, you know, in, 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 in Singapore, especially, you always want it to be in writing. But, but you know, this sort of thing, culture aspect, you cannot have in writing. You have to start doing it. I, I think this part is something we need to catch up when people are in their weekend, in their holiday, do not disturb them with work. That, that will be something I believe we have to catch up. Okay, so like the middle, middle managers better be a little bit more paisay, right? When they send out that 3 a.m. text, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, CS. You know, I actually want to hear from, you know, um, our local-based companies, you know, about, about this question. So, I see Wee Piak right, already turn on his, like, audio already. Can we Piak? Uh -huh. <laughs> Can you please weigh in on this? Yeah, I think it's 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 true la. A lot. I mean, a lot of people uh feel pressure when they when they when they go home. They still, I mean, they still have uh, all this uh, work matter oh. in their mind. And you, it's true that we are we are we are actually way behind. I think the European in <laughs> in, in kind of uh, getting them to to say okay, once I once I off work, I I don't think about work anymore. It's actually very difficult. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so we we actually, I mean, for us, we try we try our best uh, not to not to uh, communicate with our staff when they are on holiday. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose we we also uh, uh, try to uh, actually have. Actually, most of the uh, because we are a manufacturing company, so some of the some of the thing they actually cannot do at home. I mean, they yes. they, they they have to, and, and also we do a lot of R and D, and also again R and D they cannot do at home. Yeah, but we 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 actually refuse. In fact, some of our staff like R and D staff uh, wanting us to install, uh, you know, uh, for for development, we actually need a uh, special software. So uh, staff that request us to actually install the design software in their own computer. Hmm. Yeah, those actually we refuse because we, we, we actually don't want them to, uh, to and we actually it's also our belief that you actually need to take a rest and because to be creative, you cannot be, you cannot be uh, actually overstressed. Yeah. Yeah. Actually Actually, we are, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at the time now. We have about like 15 more minutes, you know, and yeah. we actually entered into Q&A time. And okay. actually, based on what you have just mentioned just now, actually, yeah. I have a very good question that was asked by anonymous attendee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it is a very good question. And um, he or she actually asked this, what are the some more prescriptive ways um, to encourage work-life harmony for folks who work with specialized machines and need to be in the office. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit like what you mentioned just now about, yeah. you know, um, having software that's installed at home. But, you know, mm -hmm. you took it from the other point of view that, you know, you kind yeah. of want them to switch off. But, you know, I, I think in this question itself, and I think um, it, it does, it is very relevant to all our manufacturers here. Mm -hmm. um, you certainly have machines, whether it's test machines, whether, it, you know, it is... <laughs> software that is very proprietary yeah. how do you you know um you know introduce you know this 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 work-life harmony element you know to 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 the work that they do perhaps we, we bet where you like to continue yeah. you know based on you know what what we were chatting a little bit just now mm. yeah it's, it's indeed uh quite difficult actually because uh yeah uh I let me see. I don't really have a good answer for that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 Mr. I understand. Yeo, can I jump in? Of course, yes. I was just um uh, going to sort of. This is something that we've been grappling with for quite yeah. some time. We are manufacturing operations. We have fixed schedules. Mm -hmm. You know, we work on um uh, uh, two shifts. Just time. Yeah. Correct, uh, and, and two shift, three crew um, timing. So, so you know, it's it's working around the clock, um, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So, in, in those types of scenarios, it can be challenging to implement flexible working. But what you end up doing is having the conversations with the employees, so that when you, because this is, as you said, just in time. You have to plan. You have to plan the inventory. You have to implement the sort of the machine um, availability, and you have to maintain uh, and manage the people availability. So actually having those conversations with individuals, we can actually sort of um, say, you know, in three months time, this is happening. I won't be able to do this type of shit. And you actually plan it ahead into your schedules. And that's what we've started doing. And, and it, it, it comes down to the empowerment or, uh, point that we were sort of sharing earlier on. Individuals feel that, you know, that, that, that they're good. And individuals feel so rewarded that actually this can happen. So some individuals might have um, sort of... Uh, evening studies um, and when they do for that period of time 
we, we just take the night shift off their, off their schedules. Yes. So it is about allowing that mechanism to, to have the conversation so we can just plan ahead. So uh, I think that that's becomes really, really important. And this is what I mean by empowering the sort of all levels of workforce. Um, uh, to, to be because that's the only way we can sort of hear the individual voices and what actually matters to them and then plan against those. So what I'm hearing is actually, you know, a combination of planning, forward planning, and also managing expectations. So you kind of know how you work and revolve your life around your shift work or not shift work, right, within three months or so. And it kind of reminds me of what Daniel you know, you had shared just now about ad hoc meetings versus meetings, right, that are fixed. You know, Daniel, so you, you are also into automation. You do robotic parts and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm very certain, you know, for a lot of these robotic parts, right, employees can't bring them home. <laughs> so, so, Daniel, what are some of the things, you know, that, um, you know, Hope has actually done, uh, you know, to answer, you know, our, 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 our attendees' question? Okay. Um, right. Sample for engineers, right, we... We explore platforms for online collaboration, right? So things like cloud platform, uh, collab in uh, coding, and also in terms of mechanical as well. And um, for technicians and operators, right, uh, it is a bit more challenging because to, it's not really possible to always bring uh, work back home. But to a certain extent, we could, for example, drafting of the work instructions, uh, um, using materials in manufacturing, bringing uh, some of it home and doing some site assemblies and or performing some uh, quality assurance checks. Mm -hmm. uh, this can actually reduce the amount of time being spent in uh, office and uh, more time at home as well. But at certain times, they need to come back uh, to deliver their works, right? So we need to redesign uh, the usual way of working to be successful in that. And also being cross-trained to a certain extent and enough documentation uh, allows other people to Transition. take on uh, the job as well to operate uh, the specialized uh, machines, right? And of course, a more elaborated way of uh, doing it is to create some kind of remote control robotics to operate uh, those specialized machines. Um, that will need some uh, NRE in that to make it happen. So um, if for big companies and, and they are going very serious about it, they should actually adopt this kind of approach. That's what I can say. Okay, yep. thank you so much, Daniel. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the time, I'm mindful, you know, we're going to be closing out maybe in about 10 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to ask a question right to Davis because I've seen quite a number of questions that's pertaining right to uh, more HR practices. So a couple of anonymous attendees, uh, and I say that because that's that's what they're registered as. <laughs> okay, so um, one 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 um, person just asked this, and I thought it's a very, very good question. It's like in some situations, some managers think that uh, home working is not as effective as working in the office because of several factors. Example, distraction from family or reduced interaction with other colleagues. How can we break this concept so that home working can be accepted as effective as working in office and whether you know there are some examples. I think this also right leads to you know um, some of the other questions that were asked earlier. Um, one had asked about you know um, how do you uh, promote work-life balance you know especially for um, uh, some of the employees who actually um, can't work from home you know or can't work from the office the whole time you know and and, and how do you measure this particularly right um, in the background right of performance measurements you know appraisals and rewards. Okay, so uh, Davis, maybe maybe you can lead the discussion for us in this aspect first. Okay, uh, quite quite a mouthful, and I think uh, it, it addressed some of the key questions that I, I mean. I, I took a look at the Q and A. Yes. Uh, yes. There is always this question about what about you know there are some jobs that is not able to work from home, and some jobs do. And as HR practitioner, how do you balance the the the, the conflict? And there's this question of perceived fairness. Uh, so let, let me address that because I think this this is this is huge. Yes. And I can see that. And I, I, I think what is important is that they employees does, does know the demand of the job. Uh, the I think you know it is actually inbuilt in many of our system that there are there are work that require you to work shift, there are work that don't require you to work shift for example. So, you know, so I think it is having that kind of conversation that 
put to bear that, hey, you know, certain aspect of the job is really not possible. It's not that I do not want, but it's not possible. So I think that, that employees do appreciate and they, they actually do understand that requirement. But what they are looking for is that when it is possible for you, like what Dr. Vicky said, when it is possible as an organization, operationally, can you have some flexibility? Are you able to adopt that flexibility? I think that is the key question. And I think organizations will do well if they are not fixated with certain aspects. Uh, in today's work life, uh, uh, and we talk about work life harmony, perhaps we should rewire ourselves to think that things should not be black and white. There would have to be flexibility by employers to administer certain aspects because no two human beings are, are alike. And there, there comes a time where they need help and you are there for them. So, okay, so let me let me let me do that. There's one this one is one one answer to that question. The second answer to that question is how do you balance it, right? Uh and I I as a manufacturing company and I also have a lab that in the lab R and D people you can't bring your test tube back home to work. Uh, so how do you do that? Is that whenever you try to sometimes provide things for them that you would not normally provide for the rest of the staff? Let me just give you an example. So as a company, we encourage vaccination. Now we give staff time off to vaccinate and then another day of time off for them to rest. That applies to all. Okay. But for those manufacturing as well as the lab staff, which we call essential workers, all right, which we call hey, they are taking tremendous amount of risk coming back and it's very important that they get vaccinated. So we, we give them vouchers, all right, to whenever they are vaccinated, we give them vouchers, shopping, and by the way, it's NTC vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So happy. <laughs> so whenever you, you can, try to create that differentiation because, yeah, indeed true, you can't exercise the same flexibility to them as you would for a admin based job, you know. So, so I think that that is what uh, uh, I I like to I like to address that. Okay, so, thank you, Davis. Actually, actually can I, I can? So, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. We, we, yeah, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. No, so just to uh, what I want to say is that one of the things that we implement for for that kind of thing is that we actually allow a very flexible work hour. That means a guy can can decide that he wants to stop work start work at 10, 10 a.m. and then uh, start work at uh, 8 p.m., for example, instead of the normal hour. So they, they can actually then balance their schedule, their mm -hmm. requirement that they need to send a kid to school or they need to pick up a kid from school and so on and so forth. Yes. Yeah, and without them sometimes, instead of coming during the weekday, they come in during the weekend Yes. to finish their task. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah very, very good. I, okay, I, I want to pass this question on to Celeste as well, because I know Celeste, right, is an SVP, right, of SITE. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think you're talking about, you know, your manufacturing facilities, and, and I think, right, um, Celeste will be able to provide a lot of good commentary on this part. Mm, I think one, uh, one thing uh, is very important is, of course, we know there are a group of uh, workers, for example, the operators, they really have to be running the machine so they cannot be uh, uh, work from home possibly, possible. But I uh, really support what uh, Dr. Biki mentioned that we, we give them a schedule really. They know when they need to come. In fact, they work two days, they rest two days. Mm -hmm. So in case they, uh, they need to like go to the clinic if they are someone from the family, they can kind of manage their schedule and plan. However, of course, there's always situation of exception. So we actually empower also the supervisor in case there's exception situation, um, they can call and say, oh, I need to change my schedule. And this, we definitely allow the, the chief uh, leadership to manage this. So this is what we can at least care, uh, uh, you know, be sensitive about their needs and uh, take care in that context. And um, in the other areas um, whereby um, 
they still have to come to work. And uh, then we, what we do also, we provide transportation for them to ensure that they do not feel their risk by taking public transport uh, in this situation of the COVID, of course. Okay. So there are some things that they actually do enjoy versus the uh, other uh, group of people that actually can do flexible hours. So this group of people that has more fixed hours, not uh, so fixed days, but then they, they also enjoy something else. This is also very important to let them know that, you know, we think about you, we didn't forget about exactly. you. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I, I think like my sister, you know, uh, Xiao Huang, <laughs> She actually said it, you know, it's, it's, it's distilled in her sentence. Flexible work arrangement is not only about work from home. Yes, you know, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so many other ways to redesign this. Um, yes, yeah. I, I can see that you're gearing to go. But I'm going <laughs> I'm, I'm to let you lead um, on this um, probably last set of questions that we have time for. And it's actually um, a couple of our attendees are asking for tips. You know, um, what, what are the most popular or well-received, you know, work-life harmony initiatives, you know, that has been introduced, particularly during this time of uncertainty? You know, um, uh, there was also you know, questions about compressed work week, you know, job sharing and all that kind of stuff. So perhaps, you know, uh, maybe CS, you can answer that. And also there was one question that was directed right to you about <laughs> culture, the German culture. <laughs> Okay, I, I try to be short and sweet. Uh, yes. um, so I think one, one misconception uh, we have is it should not be work from home. It's actually, uh, we, are, we are calling it right now a remote working. That means you work everywhere except oh. office. Uh, so this is a misconception. Uh, uh, because always people feel that, oh, when you're at home, you have all the disturbance coming from you know, your kids or television, your bed or whatever. Huh? But remote working means you find the best place to work. It can be a Starbucks coffee, it can be at your swimming pool where you're quietly thinking of something. So this is called remote working. And what we see that looking forward, it has to be a hybrid. That means you somehow need people to be in the office. Sometimes, sometimes you need people to be away and do what they are good at. So you have to go for the hybrid approach. But when people come together, that is when you are in the office, that is where we believe that uh, the collaboration, the innovation will take place. You can't actually innovate alone sitting at the beach. Some, some people could, but most, mostly you have to, through a lot of discussion that you have, uh, to come up with fantastic uh, business ideas. So that is where people come together and innovate. And then you go back and do what you are best in, quietly finish out some of your work. So that is what uh, uh, we believe is the future work model itself. Um, yeah, I think the, 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 to, to answer that question on the, uh, the German culture, uh, at least what I am doing, where most of my people know that when I'm away for three weeks vacation, I do not answer any email. So you lead my example. La. Yes, <laughs> I do not read. But I, I always tell them if there is a crisis, if you cannot handle you can still call, you know, the, the, there's still a function call, call button in the phone. People forgotten, people thought WhatsApp and email. No, there's a call button. If it's a crisis, call. If not, I'm not writing an email because at the moment if I do that, you know, down the chain will say that, oh, CS is asking for something. Oh, we have to prepare everything to reply to him. So you have to leave my example that when you're on vacation, you do not reply any email. Mm. Uh, that will be my, my summary. Very good and very good tips, you know, actually. Because actually, there was a question also to ask, right? They feel embarrassed because the boss is doing something. So bosses must lead by example. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So well, I'm going to go around, you know, um, to all of us um, here on the panel so that we can all give, you know, our pro tips, okay? So um, the next person I'm going to call on, right, is actually Daniel. Daniel, what are some of your pro tips that has okay. worked really well? Okay. Pro tips to work very well. Um, it is still the continuous refinement. I think... Um, Rolling out many initiatives, right? Uh, we need to always understand uh, from the ground guys, right? Exactly like what works, what don't work. So uh, it, it might not be an all-in-one solution for uh, different uh, departments. Right? So for example, shared services and also the engineers and the technicians and operators, they could have uh, different needs. Right? So the middle management together with the senior management, right? Need to constantly review uh, what would be the challenges and uh, constantly refine it. Right? So there is no one initiative that we can just roll out and then uh, hope for the best. So uh, right now we are still even uh, growing and refining a lot. Um, yeah. So that is my pro tip. You need to have a uh, constant engagement with the guys to always listen to them and also uh, be empathized, empathize them as well. 
Daniel, you're an engineer, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Spoken like a true process engineer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank and you. Davis, <laughs> could we hear from you? <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I will just give some some of the practices we have in Kemi. Mm. Uh, so obviously, love. yeah, <laughs> uh, the, K Kemi is a family-owned company. All okay. right, so a lot of the things that you will hear from us sounds a bit family. So bear with me. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, obviously we we do have a, I mean the usual flexible work arrangement. We have flexi flexi hours, flexi uh, work from home. We are able to swap shift and things like that. that. That's actually normal, all right? Uh, we also, also being a global company, we do, I mean, those who work in global companies know that there's always this evening calls, all right? Evening calls where you connect with US, you connect with Europe, and that is part and parcel uh, uh, of working in a global organization because you need to connect with your peers across. Uh, we, we try to tell our uh, Singapore base, you know, if you can, try your very best to ask for Asia friendly time zone, all right? If not, the next day you come, come in late. That's it. You know, that, that's what we do. Uh, we, so I, I'll share a lot, a lot of uh, the support scheme that we have. I mean, in, in a lot of uh, things that I think resonate with Dr. Biki sharing, all right? The employees organize a lot of such activity, all right? Uh, we have mental, mental health mental health, uh, uh, we have psychologists uh, coming in to talk to talk to as well as individual cases. If they need to reach out to them, reach out to them. We have parenting workshop conducted by Dex for Dex for Life. All right. Very good. Yep. Uh, uh, we we uh, like and like you know what caregiving is not only right in the purview of females. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, and that's the point. <laughs> uh, and 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 uh, like. You know, they have family days, we have family days. Uh, we have something in which we get the children to interview their, 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 their parents' manager. So I think it is important because the start, the, the children can have a visualization of the, the employee's boss and those came off quite well. Uh, and many of our long service awards, huh? Last, you know the traditional awards that people give, we have changed. Yeah, we have changed, we have changed. Because I want go Rolex. <laughs> Uh, towards more family experiences, so they bring their spouse to a to a nice restaurant, bring their spouse to nice. whatever you know. Good. So we we, we change all this from giving individual gift to the employee to more of sharing that important location with their important ones. So Wonderful. these are some of the shifting. And uh, last but not least, you know, uh, you, you you know, somebody talk about food days. For us, every day is food days. But more importantly, is we do have uh, our annual Mao San Wang buffet. Wow. Uh, yeah, and this is sponsored, <laughs> sponsored not by the company, but by the leadership. That means the leadership pay their own <laughs> to pay. So, so I think these are these are to show to the employee, hey, you know, it could have been paid by company, not that the company cannot afford. It. But yeah. I think it's it's just very that, sweet gesture, yeah, messaging, you know. Yeah. So these are some of the things that we, we do, right? So sorry, <laughs> I, I I think I take a lot of time, but no, but it's very good. Is, Spoken yeah. like a true HR professional, all about retention. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm going to uh, ask my brother. Brother Biki, <laughs> what are some of your pro tips? <laughs> Thanks, Sister Yeo. Uh, for us, it, it is very much, we must walk the talk. If you put policies in place, please be the first ones to actually start practicing some of those initiatives. And then it's the voice of our people. What are they saying? What matters to them? I shared with you earlier on that average age for us is 35 in our workforce. So last year we changed our flex program, the healthcare flex program. So childcare free for children um, before going to primary schools, they can claim that for that because that's really important for our people. Um, you know, we also looked at the way we started working more from home. So we looked at the ergonomics equipment that's needed to manage sort of the postures that of you sitting um, uh, at home because not everyone has a, 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 a setup that's needed. Uh, for, for the long-term sort of either sitting or standing desks that might be required. So we put a mechanism to be able to get reimbursement for, for the equipment that, that individuals might need. You know, and then accessibility, having virtual doctors, there's an, uh, uh, what we call the white coat um, that a rollout um, that, that, that was um, uh, done so that panel of doctors are available um, for our employees um, so they can quickly have a quick conversation. So, you know, these are the things that we heard from our informal committees that matter to our people. 
we created a mechanism that allowed that to come very quickly upwards um, because it is an engagement. And if you get the engagement right, we get the harmony right. Wonderful. Thank you so much, brother. I'm going to talk to the sister now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wanli. So, um, I mean, uh, Infineon in the big context, apart from all the welfare topics we talk about, the leaves, you know, and even we have the childcare center in uh, our near oh, in our office. Yes, wonderful. nursing uh, for the uh, mothers that come back. You know, apart from all the facilities and all this uh, leave system, uh, to me as a leader, very important is. Um, not just a role model, but also I like to walk around the office. For example, if I end the meeting late, I will walk around and check, hey, there's still this person, then I will, oh. hey, are you still around? Oh, you're having some difficulty, uh, you know, you need mm -hmm. my support. So this is uh, one area where you can get some voices out. And the other thing I do is really the group coffee chat with the next level. Because that will help me to understand uh, and get feedback whether, you know, the middle management are really, you know, also deploying the way we want. So yeah. this, for me, are the channels I, which I also want to get the voices from the working level. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, sister. And we're going to round this off, right, with Wipia. <laughs> okay. Uh, over to you. Last yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we, what we do is that we organize uh, actually a lot of TT for staff. We organize, uh, for example, we actually bring in a company to actually do medical checkout for all our staff every year. Uh, so we organize talk. Timely you know, reminder, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then we organize a uh, uh, kind of, uh, talk like finance, how to, how to make investment. We even organize cooking classes for our staff. Nice. Yeah. And uh, we actually encourage before the COVID, actually, we, we actually organize, uh, uh, for example, table tennis game or tennis game for our staff to, mm -hmm. to go out and exercise together. Wonderful. 